All right, welcome back to another episode of me rambling about stuff. And today's stuff is a topic. I want to talk to you about long video games, specifically in terms of play hours. So I think I don't know if a lot of people like this, but I instinctively want to think long games are great. That's something I just like inherently. I, that's, I think and I can't help myself, but like, is that? What's the deal with that? So why do I think long games are great? Why do I think games with long play times are inherently better over shorter play times? So with a longer game, you get... It's an amazing value for the price. You know, I feel like when you're younger, you really value that... uh How much you can get out of one game. So... I'm trying to think. Like Animal Crossing... That's a game that you can play for a long, a long, long time, like years, maybe. And that's something you get your money's worth. You know, that's just getting your money's worth. That's like a, a thing people think about when getting games. Uh, they keep you occupied for a while. So not only are you getting your money's worth, it's like keeping your mind focused on one particular thing. So with Animal Crossing, that's that's a game. It's a game that you can play for a while, but it's like something to focus your mind on. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, whatever, I'm moving on. And with a long game, you really get to like explore a story in depth. That doesn't necessarily apply with like Animal Crossing. Um, maybe if I could tweak my note a bit, I wrote really explore a story. Maybe I could like become really familiar with a game. So in terms of Animal Crossing, you get to meet your villagers and you grow accustomed to them over, you know, dozens of hours, hundreds maybe of hours. You're like, oh, there's Puck. Puck's my favorite villager. I love, I go to see him every day. I went to his birthday party last week. You know, some, like that connection is something you only get with a long playtime. Uh, in terms of story, I'm trying to think of a game It's like a long story. Persona 5, that's a game that's like 120 hours long or something. And that's, throughout that whole time, you're getting uh, like accustomed to these characters and you're becoming friends with them. You're building relationships. You know, that's part of Persona's thing, is you build relationships with these characters and you become closer to them over... Dozens of hours. That's something you can only get in a 120 hour game. You know, if Persona 5 was 20 hours, it would it would be different. It would maybe you could condense the story into a 20 hour game. But part of Persona's charm and like strengths come from having that long playtime. Maybe I'll talk about Persona later, but for now, let's talk about the types of long games. I think there's two, like, strict camps of, like, games that would classify as, like, long. So there's the first, which I think is, like, the most common these days. There's the lots of side content game. So, you know, like, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Elden Ring, Red Dead Redemption 2. These are games that there's not really a main story to... Well, there is a story in, you know, in like Red Dead Redemption, Elden Ring, Assassin's Creed. But, you know, part of the playtime of you playing for 100 hours, 100 hours plus, is you engaging with like side things. Uh, like an Elden Ring completing dungeons or an Assassin's Creed uh, clearing camps. Uh, Red, I don't know much about Red Dead Redemption 2. It's been a while since I played it. But there's a ton of stuff to do to like keep you distracted from the main story. But if you want to do main story, it's there. And then the other type is obviously like it's mostly the main plot. Like, so there's the, like I mentioned, Persona. Uh, Dragon Quest XI. It's been a while since I've played that. It's been maybe a year or two. Oh man, I want to do a video on Dragon Quest XI. I haven't talked about it yet. I'd love to do a, like a really long review, but that's besides the point. Um, 
There's some side stuff in Dragon Quest XI, but it's most in Persona 5, I guess. But the main push towards that 120 hour mark, I looked it up on like a how long to beat. I'm pretty sure it's like 120 hours ish for Persona 5 Royal. So the main push behind that, you know, long playtime is the main plot. So, as I've established, long games are great. But they're also awful. It's a weird, it's this weird like dichotomy in my mind where I both love them and hate them. I think the most obvious like thing to jump to in long games, specifically in like the side content, the games that focus heavily in side content, that variety of longer game is they can be easily bloated. You know, Assassin's Creed is the main like thing people go to. You know, Valhalla, I don't know the exact playtime. It's like crazy long, over 100 hours with like all the side content. They really knocked it out of the park with Assassin's Creed Valhalla and like post-launch support. And that's commendable to a degree. But, you know, at some point, conciseness is appreciated. You know, at some point, clearing camps is going to get boring. But even if there's not clearing camps, even if, it's just, even if it's just, you know, the story, like the story-focused long game, Persona 5, those, I wouldn't necessarily clarify, classify Persona 5 as bloated, but... It got boring to me after a while. I've restart. I've played Persona Five maybe two or three times, and definitely two of those times, I quit maybe like thirty hours in. At the same place, at the same like, if, you, if um, I'm trying to think. For those that know about the game, it's, it's Kanashiro. I think that's the guy's name. I beat his palace. I'm pretty sure both times I played Persona 5 up to that point, I beat his palace, like I beat his boss, but I didn't get to the point where you see what happens after. Like there's the downtime between beating the boss and then there's a bunch of free time. I stopped at that point, 30 hours in, maybe 25-ish, I don't know. And there's something, there's got to be something there. Like why does that happen? Why do I quit after... 27 hours or whatever. I don't know. I think it just has to be I'm getting bored of this. Like, so much of Persona 5 is, like, repetitive. Not in the same way that, like, Assassin's Creed is repetitive and, like, clearing camps and doing the same stuff. But in Persona 5, you see the same people. You see the same... Every day you go home and you see the, um, the cafe. And it just gets boring seeing all that after a while. And maybe that's the fact that it's kind of like visual novel-esque. It kind of like starts to drain me after a while. So, even if a game isn't bloated, it can get boring after a while. Like, you can get used to... It's, it's not exciting. There's not that excitement. And then, even if it doesn't get boring, even if you really like... Even if I really liked Persona 5 and got invested in it and spent 120 hours or whatever beating all the content in that game... That's so much time spent into one thing that could be spent playing other stuff. I play. I made a video. Oh man, this was, this must have been a couple months, year ago maybe, about the fact that there's too many games, and I feel like there's there's just so many games coming out that are like 120 hours, 70 hours, 90 hours. It's like, oh my god, I don't have time for all this. You know, I've recently been wanting to, like, get into a longer game recently. Just something to, like, sink my teeth into that I don't have to really think about in between making videos and all that. You know, I, it's fun to, like, get into it, but I see, like, I just look it up on howlongtobeat.com just to see what, like, how long this can last me. And I see 90 hours, I'm like, oh my gosh. That's great, but I don't... That's so much time out of my life that I could be playing, like, a dozen other games. There's one series I had in mind when I knew I wanted to talk about when I thought of this topic. It's the Legend of Heroes series. So, the modern games entries into this series, there are some older ones. I don't know if those are related to like the modern games. The newer ones, they all take place in one world. It's kind of like Final Fantasy if all the games were connected in terms of like 
there's this region, there's this character, and it'll show up in later games. I think that's the best way to think about it, because maybe I'm maybe I'm just being short-sighted here. I can't think of any game that's, like, trying to do this. I'm pretty sure there are 12-ish games in the series, and they're all connected. So, what is there? There's... So this, like, modern Legends of Heroes games, they're, that's like a sub-series in and of itself. And then in that, there's, like, sub-series. So there's Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. <clears throat> Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. There's three of those. And then there's two middle games. And then the newest is Trails of Cold Steel, and there's four of those. So there's three, two, four... And then there's some amount of ones that haven't even been translated. I think three haven't been translated into English. So there's nine that have. You know, you go on Steam and you type in Legend of Heroes and insane amount of games pop up. And they're all a part of like one, well, not necessarily one storyline, but it's like, you know, the sub-series of like a uh, Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. Those are all part of like one follows the same characters throughout and then once a new series starts it's like new characters for the most part but it takes place in like a new province in the same world and you see i'll be honest i haven't looked into it too much i played the first game and i really liked it and i've seen a lot of people talk about what the later parts are like and like how it all connects and that seems really cool but there's just so many games and each of those games, these are, I, I didn't say that, I should have clarified this. These are JRPGs. These are full-ass JRPGs. You know, these are long play times. You know, each, I was looking at how long to beat.com for the, like, to see what the average play time is for each. And each game completion time ranges from 60 to 100 hours each. Let me say that again, each, 60 to 100 hours for each game. And that's when doing some side stuff. That's generally how I play these games. Like I'll go through the main story and I'll occasionally do side quests or whatever. I did some rough math to try to figure out how long it would take you to beat those 12 games. And 960 hours. What more do I need to say? 960 hours for one series. A single player series. You know, I put... I put maybe 1300 hours into Dota 2 over a couple years. And, oh my gosh, like a single player game, that's insane. 960 hours for one series. That's just from like a creative like a development standpoint that's an insane achievement and remember it's all in the same world so there's like all these have there has to be like this this care put into crafting dialogue to make sure it lines up with what's said in older games it's it's mind-blowing and it must be so satisfying seeing all these characters grow and and the world change over i don't know is it decades i think it might be it was like years but do I personally want to spend 960 hours of my life playing one series? I don't know. That's that's a difficult question to wrangle with. Wrestle with. I don't know. What the, <laughs> it, you know, I, I really like the idea of like getting sucked into a series. You know, I played the first game. I played The Legend of Heroes, Trails in the... Is it Trails in the Sky? I don't know. That's a long, like, Trails in the Sky 1, which is like the fir the very first of the 12-ish games out right now. I liked it. I loved the characters. I loved the world. I liked the gameplay. I like, I liked pretty much everything around it. But, you know, playing that, it's, it's like a commitment. The first game, if I remember correctly, kind of ends on a cliffhanger. So I play that and I get to the end and, I'm, and that's almost like, well, I, I guess I got to play the second. Which, admittedly, I never did. But that's because, you know, I play the second game and then that ends on a cliffhanger. 
And and then I'm like, well, I got to play the third. And it just, it, each one leads into another. And so much time just gets like sucked away. And, you know, even if the games are good, which the first game was really good. It's just, is that something I want to commit myself to? I'm not sure. And that's not even talking about like the monetary cost. These games rarely go on deep sales. The first one, Trails in the Sky 1, that's always the cheapest. That'll go on maybe like $10. Which isn't even that cheap, you know, compared to... It's an older game. It's like 2011 or something. Probably even older than that. It was like a... PSP game, maybe? I don't know. That's like $10. And then Trails in the Sky 2, which is game like 2 of 12... That's like 15. And then the more recent the games are, the less they go on sale. And you know, Trails in the Sky 2, that's like... That's still an older game. Like 2011 or something. 2012. Like, they crank these games out. But the older games, they don't go on deep sale enough. I'm trying to think of something to compare it to. Like Skyrim. Skyrim goes on crazy deep sale. Or at least it used to before all the anniversary of edition stuff. Or, you know, maybe just Steam sales have poisoned me. I'm used to, like, crazy long RPGs for $5. Which, maybe publishers just aren't too hot on that these days. And on top of the, the time investment, there's this, like, actual monetary cost to it. And that's hard to, like, reckon with. And the other, I, I guess I didn't go into further detail, but, like... The other ones are like $20, $30, $40 on sale. On sale. And it's, oh my god, it's it has to be like hundreds of dollars. Which is fair enough, I guess. These games are long. Like I've already established. Like if your game is pushing 100 hours playtime, like that takes a lot of effort to get. And I can't, I can't blame them for wanting to get paid for their work, but it's a big ask is all I want to say. It's a big ask to say, get invested in our thing and spend hundreds of dollars on these games that will take weeks out of your life. I don't think I could play all those. I've wanted to, I'm sure I... I think I might have mentioned in an earlier video that I wanted to get back into it. Back, get back into the series. Play the second game. Play the third game. You know, be a person that says, I've beat every modern Legend of Heroes game. I, I'd like to be that guy, but... I just don't think I could. I think I'd get bored of the formula at some point. I think I might might have been what happened with the first game. You know, those games... I mentioned earlier, a game can be good, but... You know, just... You get bored seeing the same, like, interface and the same characters and the same writing style. Just the formula itself gets exhausting at some point. The only, I looked at my Steam list, and the only two games I've ever put more time into this 960 hours number for the entire Legend of Heroes series, was Team Fortress 2 at 1,300 hours, and Dota 2 at 1,600 hours. I guess that kind of brings it back to, like, the multiplayer playtime versus single-player playtime. Multi- that's a weird- that's an interesting, like- maybe that's another topic for another video, like a multiplayer experience versus a single-player experience. Like, why can a multiplayer experience not get so tiring? How did I play- over a thousand hours of TF2 and Dota 2 and not really care in the moment. But I can't bring myself to play Trails in the Sky 2, which is only 60 hours. Something to think about. Maybe for another video. I don't know. Maybe it's about like how you're playing with other people and you're kind of like bouncing off each other. You're playing against other people. It keeps it fresh as opposed to seeing a linear story throughout. I don't know. I don't know. For better or for worse, most long games are not Legend of Heroes. They're your Assassin's Creeds, Far Cries, Ghost Recon Breakpoints. They're games that are... that have the story, that have a story to go through, but a lot of that playtime just comes from side content. You know, distractions. I've been playing Fallout 4 recently. I, I made those videos about Fallout 3 couple weeks ago, week ago-ish, and 
Now, that kind of got me really interested in the Bethesda formula again, which is kind of like a long... The Bethesda game formula is like... goes in tandem with the long game. You know, it's something you could get sucked into. It's an easy way to get a lot of playtime for a game. It's, it's just a bunch of like... I don't want to say low effort content, but it's lower effort, I guess, compared to, you know, scripted sequences with animated cutscenes and voice acting compared to, you know, just having the player go to a, a, a settlement and they have some, and the people there have some canned uh, dialogue and they'll say, oh, go to this place and kill this bad guy. And then you come back and you're like, oh, I killed the bad guy at the place. And it's all vague to the point where, like, you can substitute the place and the request. And, you know, modern Bethesda games, they have these quests, radiant quests, that are, like, infinite. It's, it's, it's literally like what I just described. It's, like, canned responses, and then go to this dungeon, kill this guy, and then go back. And it's to the point where it's almost, like, un indistinguishable from normal quests, like, the game doesn't go out of its way to say, hey, you can... There's an infinite amount of this quest. Like, I remember when I first played Fallout 4, I was like, wait a minute. I've done the same thing. Preston Garvey says the same thing every time I come back. That's kind of weird, isn't it? And there's no, like... He's not saying the name of the settlement I need to go to. He just says, this settlement needs our help. That's, like, an easy way to get a lot of hours out of your game. And make players feel like they're keeping busy. I don't know. It's me meaningless content in a way. You're not working towards anything like narratively satisfying. It's just you're enjoying the shooting aspect of the game or the looting aspect of the game. Fallout 4 isn't necessarily satisfying in a narrative sense, but the gameplay is great. You know, the shooting, I talked about it in my uh, Fallout 3 VATS video, but shooting in Fallout 3 in New Vegas sucks. And they made it fun in, New, er, in Fallout 4. It is fun to shoot things. I love getting a laser rifle. It's The laser rifle has such good kickback when you shoot it. Oh, it's... Mm. And just the shooting itself is fun. Just walking around and looting is fun. Building settlements is fun. That's something I feel like a lot of people weren't too happy with in Fallout 4, but I really like settlement building. It's the systems of the game are fun, regardless of the, the narrative impact. It's fun to play when I'm, like, doing something else. Like, I'll find a, a long YouTube video I want to watch, but I can't, like, justify watching just sitting at, on my couch watching it. So I'll put it on the TV, or I'll put the uh, video on my monitor and play Fallout 4. And just kind of occasionally glance at the video. I guess that's something, that, there's something to be said about grinding out meaningless content compared to one satisfying story? Like, is it enjoyable? Is one longer game preferable to multiple smaller games? That's a that's a very difficult question. Would I, I, I'm playing Fallout 4 right now. I've put maybe 13 hours into it right now, and maybe I'll put another 13. Would I have rather, in a year's time, would I have rather I played Half-Life 2? I've, I played Half-Life 2 way back in the day, but I remember nothing about it. You know, I, I could play all of Half-Life in the time it takes me to beat Assassin's Creed Odyssey or finish what I've done of Fallout 4. I could play through all of those Half-Life games. I could finally play Half-Life Alex. I've heard so many great things about that, but I've been holding off because I want to get, like, I want to understand the Half-Life universe before, you know, getting into it in VR. That's a difficult question, man. I don't... I enjoy narratives in games. Maybe not as much as I wish I would. You know, there's... I, I guess you might have been able to tell that from, like, how I wish I would have played Trails in the Sky 2 and gone on throughout the Legend of Heroes games. Like, I wish I would, but I just don't want to. A lot of the time, I just want to shut my brain off and play a Ubisoft-esque open world. Like, I just want to go through a building, loot it, go back to my settlement. Fallout 4 is... It's consumed me this past week or so. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's... Deep down, I'd rather be playing a game with a more meaningful story, but... 
for some reason I can't pull myself away from these these games that have meaningless tasks and just nonsense to keep me distracted. I guess maybe I shouldn't beat myself up over it too much. You know, if I'm enjoying myself, time spent enjoying myself is still fun. You know, if I'm having fun, why try to force myself to have another type of fun? On the other, other hand, I guess, you know, playing Half-Life is more like intrinsically satisfying than Fallout 4, where it's basically just like watching numbers go up, watching my caps go up, watching my settlement numbers go up. It's more uh, fulfilling, rather. Do I feel fulfilled playing Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Fallout 4? I don't know, man. I don't know what that says about me as a person. That's, that's something to ruminate on for sure. Do you guys have a preference for that kind of thing? I'm, I'm curious what you guys out there, leave a comment on the Patreon post or YouTube or whatever. I wonder if, I wonder if any of you guys out there feel the same about like... Like, you want to play more game, like, more narratively satisfying games, but you just feel this pull to, like, games that you zone out in. Because you can't zone out in, like, a in a half-life. You can't zone out. That's like a game that demands your full attention. But in Fallout 4, I can zone out. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's, that's all I have for this one. As always, leave a comment about future topic, future game, future movie i'd like to talk about a movie sometime i don't know i tried making a video like a scripted video on a movie movies once and that was a nightmare dealing with like a content id stuff so it'd be fun to do like a an unscripted movie talking about a movie series or something i don't know i'll have to think about it yeah leave a comment if you got anything uh that's it thanks for watching see you next time